The directors were inspired to make this film after realizing that they found documentaries about paranormal phenomena. Phenomena. <laughs> phenomena. Phenomena? Phenom. Phenomena. The directors were inspired to make this film after realizing they found documentaries about paranormal phenomena. Fuck, why does that sound so weird? Phenomena. Today we're going to talk about The Blair Witch. Uh, the Blair Witch Project, which is an independent horror film. It's a found footage film from 1999. It is a movie that I thought I was going to be able to make fun of. Because I remember this movie being boring. And nothing really happening, and then it just kind of ends. And yeah. It was pretty good. Alright, quick no-spoiler plot summary. This movie is about three filmmakers that go into the woods because they're making a documentary about the Blair Witch, which is a myth from Burkittsville, Maryland. They go into the woods, they get stuck in the woods, they get lost, they can't get out. At night, bad things start happening to them. And ultimately they end up in the ruins of a house that belonged to a child murderer. So not the place you want to end up when you're lost in the woods. Not a spoiler. That's not a spoiler, though. That's just what ha I mean, that was part of the campaign, like the marketing campaign. So I don't feel bad about that. Anyway, this was one of the most successful independent films of all time. If you haven't seen it, it's streaming on Paramount+, Plus, streaming on Amazon Prime, Go see it. Come back. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I've watched a lot of bad movies lately, and this was not one of them. The directors were inspired to make this film after realizing that they found documentaries about paranormal phenomena scarier than traditional horror films. The movie was filmed in eight days with a 35-page screenplay and improvised dialogue. They shot about 20 hours of footage, which was edited down to 81 minutes. The directors moved the characters a long way during the day, harassing them by night and depriving them of food. The actors were given clues as to their next location through messages left in milk crates they found with GPS. Which, by the way, in 1999, GPS was not, you know, like how you use it today. It was rough. There's a lot I like about this film. I'm going to talk about all that, but there are some criticisms. There are some things that you might expect from a movie like this. And I'm going to point them out. And then we'll get to the good stuff. First of all, it's a 35-page screenplay. And the dialogue was to be improvised. So yeah, it's not always going to be the best. Okay, the acting, the dialogue, it's not always going to be the best. You get some cringy stuff. You get some weird stuff. <laughs> anyway, next, Heather, the main character, she's the, like the lead filmmaker. This is her project. She's either a really good documentary maker or a really bad one. I guess it depends on what you think an interviewer should do. Because in her interviews, she interrupts a lot, and it seems like she's trying to get a sound bite out of people. She's rephrasing things that they say. She's using different words. It would make more sense to me if she would just let people answer the question. Just let them talk. Let them talk as much as they want to. It's a documentary. You want to try to get as much as you can, I would think, especially from people that have experience that nobody else has, like Mary Brown, crazy Mary Brown. I'll talk about that in a second. Their decision making isn't the best. Like they're going in the woods for a few days. None of them bring a knife. I don't think you never see that. You don't see any weapons. They bring one compass. They bring one map. They have Mike kick the map into a, the creek. I know that there has to be tension built between the characters. I know that there has to be tension in the story, but they didn't need to do it. They're not stuck in the woods because they don't have the map. 
they walk one direction for 15 hours and they end up in the same place. So the map wouldn't have changed anything. Some of the witch stuff is dumb. <laughs> the morning after their first night there, Josh says he heard cackling during the night. When their camp gets ransacked and their stuff gets thrown everywhere, they find slime on Josh's stuff. And that's all we really find out about it. It's slime, I guess. It doesn't come up again. That's as much of a description as we get. I don't know what it's supposed to be. And it's more of a ghost thing. I don't know, it was weird. It's weird when it happens and it was a weird idea. Two final things, two more things, and then I'm done. I'm done with all the things I don't like about it, okay? One, I don't really know what the myth is. Like they drop a lot of stuff that happens, but it's kind of over a big time period. And there's a guy named Rustin Parr, and he's a child murderer. He killed seven kids. There was a ritual killing that happened that involved five people. There's a kid that goes missing for a few days and then shows up and says that they met some witch in the woods. There's Mary Brown, who claims that she met some lady that's covered in fur. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on, and I don't know exactly what is supposed to be the witch what is coincidence I don't know if that's the point but yeah when the movie was over I didn't really have a full grasp on what was the Blair Witch later I sort of figured out like she's a woman that was accused of being a witch and they drove her out of town and they tortured her and eventually killed her and supposedly it's like her ghost possessing people to do murders fine they don't show it. They don't even really talk about it, I don't think. The last thing that I'm gonna critique, it's not even something that I have a problem with anymore, but I get it. The first time I saw it, I get it. It's the ending. This movie ramps up hard at the end. It's just rising tension, and then what kind of feels like no climax and no resolution. Like it amps up and then it ends and it left a lot of people puzzled. But after watching it a second time, I like it more. And after reading about it and reading about why they made that decision and how the studio wanted them to change it, and they actually filmed four other endings and decided to stick with the original one. The ending, fine. Maybe it wasn't the best ending, but I can't think of a better one. And you learn to like it. You really do. It's kind of a good ending. Talk about some things I like about this movie real quick. Considering they're improvising everything, um, I think they do a pretty good job. I think a lot of the conversations, a lot of the acting comes off is realistic. I think they casted people that look real. They dress real. They sort of sound real. Like, they react in a way that's believable. The way that the characters change at certain times, I think is believable. There's a part where Mike tells Heather to stop filming Josh because he's crying. That comes off as very realistic. They do a great job of building up tension throughout the story between the characters and night after night, like intensifying what is happening to them and how they can't get out. I think they do a really good job with it. I think it builds up really well to the end and I think it makes the end better than people give it credit for. They do a lot of stuff that's pretty cool actually, like the first night there's just branches snapping in the woods and it's all around them and it's a lot scarier to think about than anything that would come across is like obvious witchcraft. They do this again with the piles of rocks it's another nice touch. The stick figures are iconic. The package left by the tent is believable as some form of witchcraft. It's an intense moment, and when she looks inside, it's everything just kind of goes together. So there's a lot that they did with the witchy elements that actually worked for me. The famous close-up shot. This is the first thing you see anytime there's a parody. 
This is another thing from the movie that is instantly recognizable. This is something that got made fun of a lot. This is at a time before smartphones. Like, it was too close. It was bad framing. It was unflattering. But that's what made it kind of terrifying. I mean, they used it on promotional materials. I also think that the shot distracts from what's happening in that moment, sadly, because it's actually a really good moment for her character. She's finally accepting that they're all gonna die out there. She's apologizing to their mothers. Okay, the ending. The ending, which most people don't like. Like, when you rewatch it and you think about it, it's really creepy. Like Josh has been missing and all of a sudden they hear him and he's yelling for them and he's telling them to follow his voice. And they follow it to this ruined house of a child murderer. And he's in there yelling for help. They go in and at this point, this is like Mike's desperate last hope. Right, like he's completely lost it by this point. So he's charging in. Heather, you can tell, is the complete opposite now. First, she was the one that was leading the way. Now she's getting lost. She can't keep track of Mike. She's screaming his name. She's terrified through this whole scene. This is like their last few moments. And they're spending it trying to save Josh. I like that so much more than an ending where, you know, like a big confrontation with the bad guy. Or they find a book and they read some passage out of it and it... it solves everything. Like, I like this so much better than what a normal movie would do. I think in a messed up way it adds to the whole missing persons thing, like the fear, the real life fear of that situation of a missing person is not knowing what happened. And you just assume the worst. Anyway, I don't want to leave you guys on a downer note, so uh, I'll tell you a little story that I thought was funny that I read about. Heather and Mike were filming in the woods for eight days, and the directors gave them very little food each day. So when shooting wrapped, they were going to take the actors to Denny's for a big, hearty meal. But shooting wrapped on Halloween... <laughs> so Mike would later describe emerging from the woods and seeing people dressed in costumes was very surreal. Uh, I think this movie was a lot of fun. I think you should definitely see it. Even if you've seen it before and don't, don't really remember it being that great, like, see it again. <laughs> Anyways, more coming soon, and I'm probably going to start a second channel for non-horror films. But yeah, I'll do that in a separate update. Thank you guys. See you next time. She's either a really good filmmaker, or she's a really bad filmmaker. I think it depends on... Sorry guys. Filming in a new location. With people around. It's not.